you everyone for coming this morning, even though I'm sure you were over at the bar or something, having some fun. So you might be ner I'll try not to be too loud, so if you're nursing any headaches. Um, so as Michael was saying, I'm a dental technician based out of Windsor, Ontario. My name is Min Tran. If this thing will go forward, there we go. I've uh, been in the industry since 2006, and I've spent the majority of that time behind a computer using a mouse and keyboard, primarily by designing on 3Shape, but I've used a wide variety of digital technology. And uh, in my spare time, I run a blog called Dental Tech Tips, so if you'd like to find me online, uh, you can find me by searching or liking at Dental Tech Tips in all the usual places. So today we're gonna be speaking about this really fundamental concept of copying and pasting and how we're gonna be able to use this to really kind of simplify some of the complex workflows uh, that we kind of encounter in 3Shape. So what we're gonna kind of cover today is some of these indications here. So temporary and prepared model, copy denture, the additional scans tool, how to launder DCMs with anatomy for use, and of course using Windows File Explorer. So this is kind of our, our little roadmap for today. So again, copy and paste. The, the concept is really simple. You have something from a source object that you hit copy, and then you take it and you find it to a destination, you paste it. And we use this quite a bit in you know, word processors, emails, uh, many different things. And usually whenever I, I give a course, or I do a presentation, I have this slide kind of saved. I've been using this probably for a better part of a decade now, where I just copy and paste this slide from one slide deck to another. And really just, just to, to get across the point that everything we're using, 3Shape, a waxer, a Bunsen burner, anything like that, it's really just a tool for us to facilitate the work that we're using. And in order to really master your tool, right? So if you're a ceramist and you're a master with your brush, you really know how to flick the brush and use it in a way that you can get those little fine details. If you're with a hand piece, you know how to stabilize yourself so you're not you know, shaking all over the place. And with 3Shape, very much it's the same thing learning how to master three shape as a tool, eventually using it enough with enough muscle memory, you'll, you'll master that tool as well. <clears throat> so the other thing I really wanna kind of speak about today is thinking outside the box and how we're gonna use this kind of concept to really tackle some of these things, right? Um, so this little puzzle here, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it online maybe, or you know, somebody shared it with you. But the, the premise is if you can have a piece of pencil, like a pencil and a piece of paper, and without lifting the pencil off of the paper, can you connect these dots using four lines? So let's see if we can go through this. Um, if you've seen it already, please bear with me and don't give away the answer. But let's line one, two, three, and four. And we didn't manage to connect that dot there. Let's try one more time. One, two, three, four. Still nothing. One, two, three, four. Let's try a different approach. Nope. Okay. And if we go here, this is how we actually solve it. One, two, three, four. By literally actually going outside of the box, that's how you solve this, right? So I want you to kind of have, keep this in mind when, with all these kind of workflows that we're speaking about today. That's the answer, I never got that. Yeah, yeah, so outside the box, you gotta go. Yeah. There you go. So some of the prerequisite understanding I'd, I'd like you to have in, when approaching these kind of advanced workflows. Computer literacy is, is absolutely critical, right? Um, understanding folder structures inside of, of Windows specifically because we are using 3Shape, and you know, copying and pasting and using basic file manipulation within Windows Explorer. If you're not familiar with any of these, just you know, on LinkedIn, SlideShare, YouTube, something like that, just a basic computer literacy course will take you quite a long way just to understand how to navigate, use the mouse, different things like that. Um, I'd also recommend um, taking a, a basic computer programming course if, not for the sake of learning the language, but at least understanding some of the fundamental concepts of variables. So quick show of hands, who can read music, play instruments? Okay, and even if you don't, I'm sure you know what this is, right? This is, it's called a staff, and, and basically this is how you communicate music, right? So if you, if I label these lines and spaces with all these letters, right, this, this is, and I have these notes, you can tell me what letter corresponds with what line or space. So if I laid out a keyboard and I put down these letters, right, could you at some pace press these keys in coordination with whatever notes you're seeing there? Very basic, you can peck away at it, right? And practicing enough and with enough years, could you play something like this? Eventually. So again, I'm gonna ask you, what, what is this? It's a mouse, right? <laughs> well, same thing, it's an instrument. And if I gave you kind of a map of what these things, all these different things do, 
with enough practice and knowing what all these different buttons and all these intimidating things all over the screen, with enough practice, pecking away, doing little tiny incremental things, over time I think you'd be able to, again, master a large full mouth case or whatever other complex case that we may encounter. So, um, another thing about understanding file structures, this is just a funny video that, that I share online. We're part of a bunch of meme groups. But uh, just be very careful when playing with folder structures uh, in 3Shape because something like this could happen. Ding, ding, ding. something fun there, kind of related to fi file manipulation. So just be very careful in 3Shape if you decide to remove or delete anything, try, try not to, to break anything because your, your managers will kill you. <clears throat> so yes, 3Shape, the control panel, all these different modules, it has all these different sub-applications, you know, model builder this, ortho designer that. It's, it's really kind of overwhelming if, if you don't know kind of where to start. But what, what I'm going to kind of back things up again, we, I really like to break things down kind of to their fundamental concepts, and we're going to look at grade 10 algebra. So, and I was very fortunate to have a very good math teacher in grade 10 algebra, and he taught me this, this, the concept of just a variable and how to break things down. A lot of people get kind of intimidated by, you know, okay, well, uh, pi equals 3.14, equal, e equals mt squared. You don't need to remember these constants. What you need to realize is a variable is just a container that holds a value. So x equals 1. We see this all the time in, in math, right? But x could also equal 233. But we could also replace x with a truck, right? It's just a container that holds a value, and it could hold the number 1, or it could hold a box from Amazon. But that truck could also contain 233 boxes from Amazon. It doesn't really matter, right? It's just we, we need to understand that these variables represent something that's a container, and it holds some kind of value. So very much like that. Dental system, 3Shape as an ecosystem, is a container and it holds certain values. It holds files, it holds, um, and inside of these files, they're also containers, right? So they're variables themselves. Inside these STL files, you could have a full arch scan, you could have a complete denture design, you could have a truck. You can import a truck in there and play around with it if you have an STL file of it. <clears throat> so moving on to another fundamental concept, that's this is grade 10 geometry and Euclidean space and navigating in three space. You see this, this is like an axis or origin that kind of denotes the, the X, Y, and Z coordinates that everything kind of can be mapped in under these three coordinates. And everything we use in uh, the 3D programs that we use is mapped to Euclidean space. So it, what happens when you're scanning things is you get all these little points and they have the X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. And one concept I really want to kind of impart on everyone is when you're working with these things, if, if you play a lot of video games, you probably understand this, but if you don't, a lot of people look at a screen and they only see like a, a 2D image and they're trying to ma manipulate it. But what, what I like people to think about is you're actually looking through a window into this virtual world. So you're looking at 3D objects projected onto a two-dimensional plane, right? So you kind of have to have this understanding of the 3D object that you're manipulating inside of the screen rather than, than actually just looking at it as a 2D picture, right? Because we as dental technicians, we're very, very um, tactile. We really like to reach out for things, grab models, inspect them, <laughs> blow on them, things like that, right? That's, that's kind of inherent in our industry. So if you're a very hands-on person and you really want to get into digital, you really need to understand this concept that you're interacting with an object through a virtual window. So uh, like this video here, when you're interacting with something in 3Shape and you're sculpting, everything is happening perpendicular to the view. So when I go here and I use this add tool, I crank all my tools up here, and I go and I sculpt, and I'm just moving the mouse around. And you can see I'm moving and I'm sculpting, and you do see the volume is happening, but it's happening perpendicular to you. So you're pulling this object towards you. So if we move this view, you can see that it's moved that way. So whenever you want to sculpt something or move something or manipulate something in 3Shape, you need to understand that you're either pulling or pushing away from whatever you're working on. So again, if I remove, now I'm pushing it away from me. 
right? So we remove some material. You can see it doesn't look like much from here, but when you move it again to that palatal view or to the, the occlusal view, you can see it being pushed in now. So really understand that's how to work with these things, right? You're not looking at this projector, you're looking at something behind here, and you're either pushing or pulling away from it. It has a virtual dimension to it. And we'll cover this case in a little bit how some of the out of the box things that a little bit later in this presentation. But again, when you have a 3D scanner, it's collecting a whole bunch of little tiny dots here, and they all have individual X, Y, Z coordinates. And if, essentially it's like taking a, a tablecloth and it's draping something over it, and then you have it all stitched together, and this is why they call it a mesh, right? They're just draping something over it, and that's how you work with this, this digital object. And then, of course, we can sculpt on top of this, right? So we're, again, inside Euclidean space. This crown on top of it has its own X, Y, and Z coordinates, all these different objects that we're working with. And then we take this, we bring it into the CAM software. And the CAM software, based on these X, Y, Z coordinates, again, figures out where these tools need to, meet, to move. Or if you're putting it into a 3D printer, same thing. It's figuring out where these things need to expose in X, Y, and Z dimensions. You press a button and you either send it to your mill here or to your printer and then you have these objects that are also based on these coordinates and you get an object or something that you're going to work on. Okay, so those are kind of the fundamental concepts there. Computer literacy, literacy understanding the variables, our containers, and XYZ coordinates working with things in three-dimensional space and understanding that those numbers kind of correspond to, to some kind of location. And I'm going to, a couple more powerful tools. I'm going to introduce you guys to what I think is the most powerful tool in 3Shape, and that is, of course, Mesh Mixer. <laughs> uh, the Mesh Mixer is a tool that we use quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm joking, of course. Um, we use this quite a bit to correct a lot of problems that we encounter in 3Shape. If we have some time, maybe I can show you a demo. I'm not sure, depending on how much time we have. But the most powerful tool to me, really, in 3Shape is Control-Z. And the reason for that is because it introduces the ability to play in your work. If you make a mistake, you can undo, right? It doesn't hurt you. If you made, you know, 763 clicks and you keep hitting undo, 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 it's, it's no big deal, right? Whereas if you're doing these things by hand, you sculpt something a specific way, you get a little bit emotionally invested in it, you don't really play with it. With Control Z, it allows you to play, it allows you to make mistakes, and it allows you to explore. So this is a very, very powerful tool. So going forward, just remember that even if you make a mistake, you can always back things up in 3Shape. So how do we put all those kind of fundamental things together? Um, of course, I, when we talk about digital full mouth rehabs, complex workflows, I always start with a super, super simple smile design because it's facially driven, prosthetic minded. And I, I sound like a broken record because I speak about this a lot, but we always start with a smile design because it's a very arbitrary point to start, right? And then we can pair these things with 3D digital diagnostics. I've spoken about this quite a bit. I won't go into too much detail because uh, it's, it's quite an extensive topic here. But the digital diagnostic, how do we do this in 3Shape, right? Um, I'm going to kind of take you through the, the process here. So in 3Shape, you're going to make a new order. You're going to right-click, new. And in the top corner here, you're going to make sure you select digital impression. And again, remember that concept of variables I just told you. Even if it's not a digital impression, if you're scanning in a model, after the fact, you're going to set it to digital impression because it's a variable. The software is just looking for something. It's looking for some kind of object. And the reason we do this is because if we set it to digital impression, it allows us to select model. See this option here now? We can choose model. So let me go back. Okay. If we didn't select that, this would have been grayed out. So very much like, it could, it could be called whatever you want. It doesn't need to be called digital impression. You could call it monkey, right? And the monkey wants a banana. So if you give it a banana, it'll give you what it wants. So now that we have it set to digital impression, we're going to select all these temporary unprepared model indications. Let me start that over again. This thing got a little bit ahead of me. Select those, shift click all these, and you're going to go to temporary unprepared model. Again, don't worry about what the, what the indication is. We're just setting a whole bunch of Pontics. I like to bridge them together because it saves you a little bit of time. And then we select model because it's digital impression. Right? And then we go ahead, hit OK. And we're going to import our scans in. If you already scanned in a model, it might ask you if you want to rescan. Hit no because then you can proceed.
And this is me just going through this design. And the reason I like temporary and prepared models is because it's a very free form designer. It allows you to play. You don't need to worry about margins. You don't need to worry about cement gap. You don't need to worry about contacts or all these other errors that 3Shape kind of throws at you. Okay, well you need to validate, you need cement space, you need all these things. What I'm focusing on here is I'm placing these pontics in what I think is kind of an ideal position. And I'm looking f to open the video. Maybe there's some crown lengthening that needs to be done. Whatever it may be uh, that I can, so I can speak with the doctor and say, hey, you know what? I think this is kind of what we need to do moving forward. And I can jump back, jump forward, open the video, sculpt things a bit, make sure we have some kind of good occlusion here. And these things, they don't, they don't collide with each other. You don't really need, need to care. And then you just close and proceed with your, your next step. And what you do then is you, I didn't include it in here, but you go into Model Builder and then you attach these things and then you just print the model or you can print seven different models or seven different sets of models. Um, doing these things by hand, here's a picture of a wax up from a few years ago that I thought at the time was really good, but looking at it now, it's pretty awful, right? But again, it's that concept of you feel like you're really invested in doing something, because not because it was good, but because I spent a lot of time on this doing it by hand. And uh, I'm the first person to say I'm a very mediocre technician when it comes to using these, but I'm, I'm pretty good when it comes to using a mouse and keyboard, right? So being invested in it and doing these things, again, using that concept of control Z, being able to undo things, it makes, me, um, what I think, a better technician objectively, rather than having a subjective bias because maybe this one line angle looked a little bit good and I based everything else around that. So again, digital diagnostics, you bring it in, I, I didn't show it in this start part, but you kind of can sculpt it all together, it's all attached now, and you can print these models and send them off, right? It's, and it looks much, much better and much more, and it takes you much less time. So again, now you take these in, it goes into a second console here, and this is what it looks like here, right? And immediately you get more, much more confidence from the patient, and you see the, the difference pretty, pretty readily. Okay, so now we have that digital diagnostic. How do we transfer this from our provisional stage or whatever stage into our finals, for example? So if, you're, if you don't know any of the concepts I'm going to show you today, you'd maybe scan something in like this. You have the temps here, and you're going to use this morph to additional scan. You're going to get these kind of wrinkly, sad copies with air bubbles and all this thing. And you're going to go in there. Maybe you use the, like the sculpt tools to kind of carve some chicken scratch to make this somewhat presentable and clean up all these blobs everywhere that aren't doing what you want them to do. And this could easily take you two hours, right? Because you're basically redoing this design from scratch. You might have some references of occlusion and a couple things, but it looks nothing like your design that you had initially made, right? So it's taking a lot of time, number one. And number two, it's, it's, it's just you know, very laborious and it, it doesn't look that good. So rather than doing that, we're gonna undo all that stuff and we're gonna teach you a concept of anatomy for you. So we're just gonna bring this in the way it was before, right? It's already beautiful, it's already great. Maybe you need to, and actually in uh, 22, you have the option to now sculpt to an additional scan. So you can actually just morph, if the doctor ad adjusted the occlusion or anything like that, you can just morph these little points just a little bit so you have it represent what's in the mouth. But you're retaining all these embrasures, all these sharp details, all this hyper texture on the, on the facials here. So work smarter, not harder, of course, um, and we're the first step to that is anatomy for reuse, using dummy orders and file manipulation, again, using Windows Explorer. So anatomy for reuse is, is a very, um, really, it's like black magic, really. It, you, you wouldn't think it would be this simple in 3Shape, but when you look inside of a folder, for example, inside of 3Shape, they have all these different folders, and we're just gonna kind of go through each one. The first one here, anatomy elements, contains all of these DCM files. When you open them up, what it shows you is all these Pontic files in XYZ coordinates with the, in relation with each other that what you previously did in your diagnostic design, right? And this folder is where you're gonna grab all of these Pontics and you're gonna copy and paste it as anatomy for use into a new order. And we'll kind of go through some of these other folders. This backup folder here, not very important, uh, just has some, uh, some data in there. If you make a copy, maybe you can go back and update your materials file. I don't really use it, but if, if you're in a bind, maybe you need it. The second folder that's kind of important is this CAD folder. Inside this CAD folder, you have all these DCM files. And these are the same files as inside your scans. We'll explore this in about two minutes. But the CAD folder has also these saved model files once you generate those. And 
quick dental tech tip here is if you have trouble generating CAM, grab these DCM files, convert them, and turn them into an STL file, and then that's a, another way you can get an STL file out. It won't come in proper orientation, but you can really quickly reposition things in CAM if you need to. Okay, going back here, so external models, these are unmodified um, files, the same ones as the anatomy elements, but none of the sculpt tools. So it's just bringing them back in and then you apply the sculpt. So don't copy the external models, you're gonna copy the anatomy, anatomy elements. Feature cache is where they save all those mouse clicks and everything inside a file. So if you're doing a redesign, it speeds things up. And then the scans folder, sometimes you need to rename things, change things. And if you look very, quick, very closely here, you have MB preparation scan. That means model builder preparation scan. You have your regular preparation scan, and then you have raw preparation scan. When you're importing something in, uh, it'll come in typically as a raw preparation scan, so long as you have that little checkbox mark that the scan is unprepared. If it's not checked off, it'll come in as a preparation scan, and that could mess things up a little bit for you um, with some segmentation lines. And if you make any changes to occlusion or you modify or sculpt the, the model, it'll come in as an MB preparation scan because this is, what, this is the file that Model Builder uses to actually build your models. So it'll represent any opening in video, any changes. So if you end up actually changing the video and then you try to copy the case, very often it'll pull over the preparation scans, your CAD files be one way, and then the scans will be completely different. So if you need to, copy the MB preparation scan, rename it, and then copy the case, and then you'll preserve that video opening from one case to the next. And then all these files here, the only one that's kind of important is the materials.xml file, but I won't say too much about it because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so we can modify some things in there, and that's all I'll say. So again, you get these final scans from the doctor of the, the provisionals with the, uh, the preps and everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Explorer. We're going to make our final order here in the order form. And we're going to go copy, standard copy. Actually, no, we're going to go new. Oops. Make all this. Where is it? Okay, dummy order. There it is. And we're going to import a scan in. You're going to import your previous scans, um, well, the new scans, anyways. Again, you can see that little checkbox there. If you select something, they'll say scan is unprepared. So always make sure that's checked off when importing things in. And now we're going to go ahead, go to design. scrub through this a little bit here. So what we're doing now is, the, the, the problem is when you get one trio scan from another, your coordinates are gonna be different because the doctor took a scan and the position of this trio's order is, is completely different. So what we're gonna do now is with the additional scans tool over there, we're gonna bring in our, pre, our new scans with our previous scans and we want them to line up. Because again, those anatomy for reuse elements are floating in space in correlation with our previous model. So if we bring them in with this model here, they're not gonna be in the proper alignment. So we go in, we select three points, align everything, and now we're able to, and then we're gonna save these files as, um, sorry, the angle's a little bit weird here. Let me look here. So now you can see that our scans are in proper alignment from the, the temporary to the, the final scan. I'll scrub through here a little bit. And that's the final scan there. So now we go back to our diagnostic order. We're going to go advanced, explore. I'm going to grab that folder there. Grab that anatomy elements folder. Right click, copy. Go to our dummy order, advanced, explore. That's going to pop up. You're going to right click, paste and you're gonna rename it, you can hit F2 or right click, rename. And you're gonna change it to anatomy for reuse. 
And then now we'll bring our design back in. You just go through, mark your margins, make your designs that actually don't have that because it, it, it is a little bit laborious to go through and mark all the preps, so I'm not gonna show you the design. But you can see here, these, these are the, the temporaries that we had in the mouth. You can see the alignment of the finals. So now that's the alignment of the anatomy for reuse there. And then this is actually the scan of the final crowns, copied and pasted. So, and again, this is kind of the, where we started and that's the, the final result of, of what we did. So, you know, be lazy because it, it makes things much, much easier. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very lazy person actually, but uh, they, just because I don't like doing things harder than, than they have to be. <clears throat> So using temporary and prepared model for, for so many different types of things, right? You, you don't just need to use it for simple crowded bridge like that. You can use it for something like this, and, and that's where a doctor fires off this case. So maybe we do a very quick smile design, and you say, you know what, she needs some crown lengthening. So we hop on the phone with the doctor, the periodontist, and the three of us are on Zoom, and I'm showing them this design. I go, okay, well, this is where my proposed design is for kind of what I think is the best aesthetics, and the periodontist goes, no, you're absolutely nuts. You're gonna compromise the crown to root ratio. You gotta back these things up a little bit. And it's really cool because you're working very collaboratively with each other and live in real time. We never had this kind of collaboration before. So now, I, back in the day, I used to do these with like a, a custom tray module where you cut these little windows out. Uh, but nowadays, I do a little bit different. I'm not sure if I have that in here. And then we can make um, prep guides and everything like that, and that's kind of the final. I'm not sure if I included in this one. I did not, actually. So uh, nowadays what I do, instead of doing these um, custom trays, I'll do an Essex suck down just because I think it's a little bit faster. <clears throat> so another example here is, um, so another example here is, you know, you can bring these um, face scans in, you can bring in pre-prep scans of like a, an in, like a provisional denture. You can bring all these different tools, all these scans and using this additional scans tool. And you make sure everything is properly correlated by aligning them with all these different points. And it gives us a really facially driven result, right? And you can see here that the results are, are much better matched to the patient's actual facial planes. And that, that's a really nice way of, of using additional scans and lining all these things up to make sure it's all nice and correlated so we have a, a very good result. So in a case like this here, uh, we've done the bar. And now what we need to do is we need to be able to make a zirconia sleeve on top of it. So um, quick quiz for everybody. Um, how would we make, an in what indication in 3Shape can we use to make a sleeve that will fit over this bar that's intimate fitting but also accounts for um, cement gap and having burr compensation so that it, it, it doesn't bind when we're seating it in? Anybody? You know it, so you can't, you can't answer. <laughs> So basically, uh, it's actually the first indication that we had in 3Shape, and that's uh, the, the coping workflow, actually. And what, so what I call this is the 3Shape big coping workflow. Right? And, and again, it's really taking advantage of variables, really taking advantage of this concept of con containers, the anatomy for use. The software doesn't care what you put in the order. right? You, it's just going to be a coping, and then we're going to make something on top of it. Right? All that cares is as long as you, you put the data in there that it's looking for, it's going to output what you want. So again, when we do these orders, make a new order. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select this one tooth here. Okay, I'm gonna select this number two, set that as a coping. Number three, set that as an anatomical coping. Import our scans in. Copy our old diagnostic, paste it in here, anatomy for reuse and I named it unn3.dcm, because that's the, the, the name of tooth number three. So we go through, segment our bar, mark it as a pontic and a coping, mark our margins, set our um, directions so we have a nice um, path of insertion. Now we got a margin, and then we go and we apply the dye interface so it gives us a good cement gap as well as burr compensation. So now what we do is we can go up here into the smile library and you can see here that's the, the library of, of the unn3.dcm, right? And this is the design I did, my pre-design from who knows how long ago. And we can 
paste this into the software basically, right? You select all these different teeth. They're also named unn3.dcm inside the control panel library. This is just our anatomy for use. But if I click this, three shapes can get really angry at me because I didn't give it the data that I wanted, right? I made a little bit of a mistake here, um, so it, it's, it's pretty mad at me. And the reason for this is because it's looking for some kind of marker, some kind of information inside of this variable that I didn't supply. Um, so what I do is, I'm, it's what I call a little bit of Hollywood magic. Uh, a, a magician doesn't give away all of his tricks. But basically, um, what, I, what I call it is, is laundering things, for, laundering DCM files for anatomy for use. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, it is, it is uh, premium content that I, I'm going to be having some hands-on courses for. But basically, when you launder these files, right, and you input the data that it's looking for, and we, again, go through this really quick design, doing all the same things we just did in the previous step, now that we have the correct markers inside of that unn3.dcm file, mark the margins once again, <coughs> set our cement gap, And now if I click here, it comes in just fine. And now it, it's not completely done yet. These areas that are poking through, you do have to sculpt a little bit. But we'll go through really quickly and just sculpt the underside here. Make pretty short work of it. But now we have our, our single pontic, which is tooth number three, connected to our coping, which is number two. You can enforce a one millimeter, one and a half millimeter thickness everywhere. Smooth all of this out, and you have yourself a sleeve that has, you know, machinable surfaces. You can also go through, add parametric cylinder holes, one by one, putting them all in. So the machine will mill these out, and you have, you know, your zirconia sleeve that'll fit over this bar, and it'll just drop in really passively. Okay, so another example of using this kind of outside of the box thinking, right? Adding a third bicuspid. So you do a design like this. We have two premolars, two molars in here. And you're going through the design and you realize you need a third premolar. So what do you do? Do you close everything and try and add a third premolar and do all this stuff? Absolutely not. What I do is I grab this second premolar here, move it over, control click with the additional scans tool and save these two as a single unit and then I'll load these in. Uh, the only mistake I made in this video was I forgot to correlate this with the lower model, so it's actually set as upper model here. So when I try to morph it, it doesn't morph properly. Once I realize my, my mistake, I go back into the additional scans tool, and then I morph it properly. So I'll just... So just make sure when you're bringing things in through additional scans that it's correlated with the proper jaw that you want it to, to line up with. So we'll click here, click on a different tool. It takes a second for these two jaws to switch relations. Go back, and now you'll see one .dcm here. And now we'll click morph to additional scan, and it's going to morph our one tooth into two. And now we can rotate it just a little bit so it's in a little bit better position. Is it perfect? No. Um, but it's much better than going back and having to redesign this entire arch and adding a pawn tick or trying to change the order form and then it's you know, introducing unnecessary chaos in your life. Open up the embrasure a little bit, smooth things out, and it's, it's, you know, it's perfectly fine. So uh, one of the, my favorite features that they introduced uh, in, I think, 2019 was uh, more investment into digital dentures, really. And uh, the copy denture module is one of my favorite because it's, it's really, a, again, you don't get stuck on the name copy denture. It's more of a solid object editor. So in the past, when you're using 3Shape, what you'd encounter is you'd only be able to work with shells, right? It'd have to be an open shell. If you brought it in as a solid object, if you had like a Serona scan or something like that, um, it would throw an error and say it's, it's it's a closed object, we can't work with it. With copy denture, you're able to sculpt solid objects. So this, this opens up a lot of different possibilities and different things. So very much like that um, 
pre-design of that, that full arch roundhouse that I did, you could bring that into coffee denture and you can sculpt it a little bit. Let's say you have a little bit of deficiency from the, the prototype to the tissue. You can bring that in and sculpt it a little bit down further to the tissue and it allows you to do um, very, very advanced things actually. So let's see here. Oh, this is just the, the actual how you scan in a copy denture. And what you're doing is the way that the software works is it's scanning on one side, it's scanning the other. You align the two together and then it creates a solid object out of it. So if you want to use, if you want to import something into the copy denture module, you're going to select. Oh, okay. I got a little bit ahead of myself. So the, what we're doing here is, um, in this case, we are trying, the doctor says, you know what, the patient loves the way that their denture fits, um, but they, they want new teeth. Right. What you can do, of course, is you can go back there, scan all these things in, try and make an, an inverse of the wash impression or, or just the existing denture, and then you're going to reset the teeth. But those peripheral borders might not be exactly on. You might not get exactly the same. So a very nice, cool workaround is you actually use, again, temporary unprepared model on the upper and the lower, and you import it, the copy denture in. So let's resume this video here. Again, temporary and prepared model because it's just a free form editor. And we're gonna import those dentures that we scanned in as a copy denture. And now we've just marked those as temporary and prepared model. Go through and now I have my library. I'm moving it into position. What I think is kind of aesthetic, what I think looks good for this specific case. We sculpt things, we tweak things. And now that I have everything in kind of a position that I think is, is pretty good, I can go and remove these teeth. So you go back to the first step, the prepare step, you go to sculpt upper jaw, you can remove all these teeth from that denture base. And you can go forward and you can play with these teeth a little bit more, check the, any contacts, open the video, move things around if you want to. But we want to preserve that, that relation that they have that the patient's really comfortable with. And we're going to just tweak our design, go back, go forward, copy things, move things. It's a very free form way of designing and it allows us a little bit more freedom. But again, now we're going to preserve the fit of this denture exactly, the occlusion of this denture exactly. But to get these new, you know, better looking teeth, you can mill these in you know, a brighter shade if that's what they want. And it's going to look much better than the, the denture that they previously had, but it's going to fit exactly the same as the, the, the previous denture they had. So it's, it's just, and using this tool is very powerful because you get so much free form ability to go back and forth and just re really pay attention at what the different things I'm doing. Going back to one step, I'll remove the, I'll sculpt the gingiva a little bit more. I'm going to cut things. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to play with the contacts. And now all we're going to do is we're going to go and cut all the, on the underside there. We're going to save these. Control click. And remember what I was telling you guys earlier about Mesh Mixer. This is where that comes to the rescue. Because now I'm just going to sculpt all these, the tissue around so we get, you know, nice, nice gingiva if there's any bubbles or anything like that during the, the scan there.
happy with the contacts, we're happy with everything else. Control click and save all these. Lower combined, upper combined .stl. And you can definitely put this into uh, print software and it might print, but I like to bring it into Mesh Mixer. And again, that, that joke I was put saying earlier about um, how Mesh Mixer saves a lot of things, you can bring it into Mesh Mixer here and you're gonna go edit, make solid, change these settings here so it becomes one solid object everywhere. There's that little artifact there. I'm gonna change a couple settings so it comes out looking a little bit better. And now this is one solid manifold object, watertight everywhere, and now this is printable. Sometimes if you have those junctions, the printer might spit out all these artifacts. So this is how you use Mesh Mixer to really combine all these objects that you've put together. And then we just drop it into the printer here. The, the slicing software, I mean, and then we just press print, and now we have some monoblock trines that we can send to the doctor. They'll try it and make sure everything's good, midline, can't, anything like that. And then if they're happy with it, we'll just take that same design, and then we'll go bring it back through copy denture, segment those teeth, generate the pockets, and I'll mill the base and mill the teeth. Another way you can use um, kind of the, these out-of-the-box thinking is for um, immediates. So a lot of times the doc doctors will ask us for immediate try-ins on these, these types of cases. And what you can do is you can use the RPD module and kind of draw around the teeth, but you kind of have to squeeze the teeth. With this, you're actually using a denture library. So I just clean it up like I would a regular immediate, and I'm just setting up the teeth completely. And then what I do is I'll bring it back into my temporary unprepared model as a UNN3. This one is a UNN18 or whatever it is. I don't know the American numbering system that well. I'm, I'm Canadian, I apologize. But um, basically you bring it in and you cut. You do a precise cut to, to gingiva and it'll cut out all those teeth. And it'll give you this here and then it'll fit perfectly onto that, the existing immediate there. Same thing here. Is this the video? It is the video. Okay, so you bring all this in here. And then we just go hit precise cut to gingiva. And it has all these holes generated. So now you can actually put this in. The patient can try it in before they're due for extractions. And we can print this out just in a monoblock. And that, that's actually the try-in of this one here. The bite was a little bit off, so it goes, okay, you know what, can we just reset this a little bit and we'll do one more try-in before we take it to the final. And she was set for extractions. Um, another out-of-the-box one, if you saw my presentation yesterday where I spoke a little bit about this case, but I didn't speak about the challenges with it. And this is kind of a failure on my part of communicating properly to the doctor how to take this scan. So this here is um, a clear radiographic duplicate with some uh, radiographic, radio opaque markers. And basically what the doctor has to do is he has to take a CBCT scan of the patient wearing it and then one with kind of like a styrofoam cup inside the CBCT. He thought the patient coming to the lab for a copy denture scan was sufficient enough. And at this point the patient was out of town and we couldn't get her back in, but he did luckily have this still in the office. So I told him, you know what, um, I think I have a solution for this. So what I did actually was, I'm gonna go forward a little bit to this video and I'll, I'll let my, me myself in the past explain it better than I can now. Hey guys, I'm in here with another out-of-the-box kind of case that I'm working on here. So what we have here is a duplicate denture that we're using for the reference uh, dual scan protocol. And it has these um, radio opaque markers that we've put into this uh, guide material. And what happened was the doctor was supposed to take two scans, one with the patient wearing this, and then one where they kind of set it on the styrofoam cup inside the CBCT so I can use both of those to align it. Uh, they only sent me the one scan, so this one here, um, and we don't have the other one. So what I told them to do was actually just send me this. He happened to have it sitting around in the office. And now that I got back in uh, the lab here, I'm actually going to use my true bite millimeter rule. And I just kind of measured the distance from like, kind of all these different cervicals and whatever to kind of bring it back into the copy denture module in three shapes. And what I did was I actually sculpted these same sites that we have in these, uh, where I put these radio opaque markers. So I punched these in and I kind of measured them and they're, they're pretty close, like, you know, within a few millimeters. Same thing. So then I import this into Blue Sky Pen. I just like to use Blue Sky Pen, but uh, basically you just go through, mark all your markers, hit OK. And then uh, what you see here now is um, the alignment between the two.
pretty good. So again, just some outside of the box thinking and kind of rescue me a little bit. It's not going to be precisely exact, but again, we're going to now import the tissue model so we can kind of see where we want to place these, uh, these implants. So yeah, exactly like I was saying, but this is this kind of, again, you have some more outside the box thinking. Now what I'm going to do moving forward is really I'm going to always sculpt these copy dentures before I ever put them in the printer. And the reason being is if they ever do this again, number one, it comes out of the printer and I just need to fill it with some barium sulfate, seal it up, cure it, and then we can send it off. But if I need to, I always have this file of what I sculpted, what I printed out in that position already, and we don't have to rely on that secondary scan. You can use this one and align these wells to those little balls inside the CPCT. So this, I think, was the video here. I'll scrub through it really quick. Kind of screen, but again, you just go through. The one thing I will say is you want to mark the inside of the balls here so it corresponds with the inside of that well, right? So you have to think of the, the, the lingual side of this ball or the buccal side or the lingual side of that one, right? So it, it, it corresponds a little bit better. Because we have so many points, they line up pretty good. And then we, of course, did the plan and all that other fun stuff. And what you do then is you can bring in your surface scan align the surface scan reverse to your denture, and then you can generate your guide. And again, I can export this back out, and we can punch these holes inside of copy denture again, zip this out inside of copy denture. We mill this in a monoblock. I printed a duplicate here, and we just you know send this off to the doctor. And he actually did this, the surgery on Thursday. I still haven't talked to him, so I'll, I'll find out probably on Monday or Tuesday how, how this one went. And uh, another one here. So tw um, 22, uh, beta tw we're in beta 22 right now. But it's no secret that they have a web viewer because we've requested it for so long. But prior to that, I always wanted a web viewer for 3Shape because, you know, um, ExoCAD has a web viewer. All these other, they have excellent web viewers where you just send a link to your doctor and they can just go on a web browser, open it up, and they're able to see things. With 3Shape, we never had that functionality. So I'm, I'm a big 3Shape guy, so I, I kind of found a workaround. Um, speaking of the beta, uh, this is a little fun video here. And th that's really kind of how it goes. So, yeah. So anyways, a company like Full Contour has a, has, has a web viewer. But, you know, it's, it's not really realistic. You know, it's, it's, it's a good web viewer, and it's, it's very easy to generate a, a very quick um, link that the doctor follows. He f goes into his email, doesn't have to log in, doesn't have to do anything. He just checks the plan, and he can approve it or make low comments, right? But we don't have this in 3Shape. And, you know, th like I said, ExoCAD and a whole bunch of other programs do. So there's got to be a better way. So of course, in 3Shape, you, when you design these files, remember that CAD folder I was telling you about, when you uh, finish your diagnostic wax up, these teeth are gonna be in color with the color scan from that model that you've built, and it's gonna be inside that CAD folder. So what we can do is we can go Advanced, Explore Order. Oh, this is that diagnostic video again. Advanced, Explore Order, and you're gonna grab these CAD folders, upper jaw, lower jaw. And those are the upper and lower jaw with color and everything. The nice thing about the DCM file format is it preserves color. So if you set your material to a tooth colored material, it's going to apply a tooth colored material to it. If you set it like titanium or cobalt chrome, it'll, it will show up as like a metallic teeth. So you just want to make sure your colors are set properly. They've updated to Unite, but it'll work kind of the same until they do the, the web viewer. Um, but basically, you go into what was previously done on desktop, now Unite, and you'll select your clinic there. You're going to select a crown as just a, a random arbitrary object here. And you're gonna go through, you're gonna import your object. So again, advanced import, go here, find that folder, grab those upper and lower scans. We can even include our previous scan, so if they wanna see a pre, as a pre-prep. And we just go through and we go to the send. And now we hit send, it's gonna generate. I'm gonna send it to myself here. And I'm gonna get a notification on my uh, Gmail. 
So this is what it looks like inside my dental desk, or my Unite. And then we are going to send it. Go to my Google Chrome. Oh, there we go. We have a notification from me. So I clicked and I followed this. The caveat here is your doctor does have to have a communicate account. They can sign up for one for free. Um, they, they can have limited functionality to it, but you just go in, they register for an account like this. I think I forgot my password the first time, so that happens to everybody. So I write and I hopefully get it right the, the second time. Okay. So now we'll go in, and it looks blank. So just tell your doctors, you know what, go in here and make sure you click this 3D button because we didn't attach any 2D images. We just attached a 3D model. So now inside their web browser, if they go full screen, they can see this in full color. They're able to turn things on and off, rotate it around, and it's a little bit better than pictures. And hopefully the, the web viewer functionality in, in the 22 actually works something like this as well. Another fun kind of out of the box way to, to get something that, that you want. So one last analogy here. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know um, Super Mario, right? The, the premise of a, a video game. So Super Mario, it's very simple. It's Mario's here, you know, he collects mushrooms, but he goes from one side of the stage to the other in a very linear fashion, jumping, collecting mushrooms, stomping on enemies until he gets to the flagpole and slides down. So three shape, as it's intended to be used, is very much like this linear game of Mario, where to go from point A to point B, you do it in a very efficient manner. And that's why that it's very successful as a program because for 90% of the stuff that we do, we do want to go from point A to point B very fast, right? And that, that's, but if you spend a lot of time in the kind of the edge cases where I spend most of my days, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with a game like Grand Theft Auto, right? Which is also based in California, fun enough. Grand Theft Auto is what they call a sandbox video game, right? And you're able to go around, you know, go bowling with your cousin, and you can go steal cars, you can drive a taxi around. And it's really fun because you can do whatever you want at whatever pace you want. So very much like those copy denture designs, doing all these things where I'm very free form with my design, going back and forth and switching from different steps, is very much like playing Grand Theft Auto. So if you want to tackle complex workflows, play less Mario, play more Grand Theft Auto. So, a summary of what we've covered today. Temporary and prepared model, it's a free form sandbox designer. Your copy denture module is not a copy denture module, it's a way to edit solid objects. So if you have a solid object, if you want to scan something in, one of the fun things we did when we first came out was um, one of my coworkers, he had a headphone, a set of headphones, but his brothers um, broke them and there was a little piece that came off but it was identical to the other side. So what we did was we took it off, we scanned it with the copy denture module, and we mirrored it, and then we 3D printed it, and then you were able to screw it in on the other side. So again, if you bring something in like that, you're able to use copy denture to, to really do these, these kinds of things. Additional scans tool, you're able to import things in, you're able to align them, you're able to combine things, you're able to export them out. Laundering DCM files, again, if you wanna learn how to do this, dentaltechtips at gmail.com, or find me on, online, and I'll, I'll send you a link to the course for that. And then, of course, Windows File Explorer. Make sure you know how to rename, manipulate files, do all that stuff. Finally, you know, just, just mill it. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time.